so here's what we've got. Um, you get your standard kit, gonna come with your case, GFCI, make sure you're safe, safe and protected, your gauges, and then you're gonna have two inch cup wheel for your undercut, 60 grit, 150, and a 300. This is the 40 inch glide guide, and as you can see, covers a normal kitchen pretty well. Does not include these, gonna come with little tiny C-clamps. I chose and just grabbed these. I think it's easier to adjust and mess with. Um, when you're tightening this down, just make sure that you're only softly tightening each end down at the beginning. What we're gonna do to make sure that our width and everything is the exact, or our depth is perfect, these are our depth gauges. I ideally like to have this to where my pinky is just right on it. So like I can barely feel it with my, or not my pinky, but my fingernail. I can barely feel it with my fingernail. If you go too much in, that means you're gonna be undercutting way too much. And I've outlined where that undercut's gonna be doing roughly in, the, in this yellow marker here. Now, as you'll see, when we get here, and this is only with the cup wheel, because your 60, 150, and 300 are hitting right along this top, which is what I didn't color. That's where your shelf is gonna be. That's what butts into the other piece, so you're gonna be doing both pieces like this. But this is the back of the stone. We don't care if glue goes out there. We're creating a channel here. It's gonna be roughed up and it's gonna be really easy for the stone to adhere to the other piece and as well to this. But we don't want it coming out. This is our little tiny OG profile. So this is the front. This is, everybody, this is what everybody wants, this is what everybody's seeing. We don't want that channel going completely out. So when I start this and I'm running them, I'm starting on this side and I can start off and I'm coming in through it this way. But as I get to the close where I need that channel to be closed, if you see this, the edge of this pad, obviously your bit is right in the middle. I'm stopping right. Let me see if I can get it with my finger. Right there. So at the edge of the, there's the profile and we're covering it up. So once you have that even with the profile, you are able to create this channel. And again, that is to keep the glue from busting out and making you have to clean up and do more, do more work times money at the end of the day. Um, so what I like to run is the Makita that you're getting is a variable speed. So at the very bottom, got your speed adjustments for the cup wheel. I like to run it around a two and a half or a three. That's around 4,500 RPM roughly. When I switch over to those discs and the 60 grit, 150 and 300, I'm actually going to drop this down to about a one and a half. We're sitting at around 3000 RPMs in that ballpark. And, uh, because we are not removing much material, we're doing almost more of a polish with these. Um, we want them to be a lower speed. Now for yours, like you were saying, you wanted to knock off a 16th or something, obviously you'd measure this depth the way you need it to do so that you're only removing maybe say from here to here or vice versa, and just use that 60 grit. And then just boom, just blast it back and forth with this thing. Um, that will eat up enough and it's gonna give you a straight 90 degree cut. And then when you're ready to finish that up and get into the actual seam phantom, Again, we're running the cup wheel, snail lock adapter. You got the snail lock uh, or the snail lock backer. It's got a snail lock adapter included, and these just fit right in uh, clockwise to tighten, counterclockwise to take off. Um, pretty simple there. Now, when we, uh, well, let's see, we'll go over how you're going to hold it because there's two different ways, and if you don't hold it properly, you can really run into some issues. What we're looking for at all times. Once we've got it all tightened down. Um, when I first do the tighten on this, when I tighten the clamps down, I do a measurement after I soft clamp them, make sure I'm still at that exact spot. I will do both sides, make sure they're completely tightened down. And then I'm gonna check my depth again, just in case it slipped on me, it moved. If the water is on this, now there is a little rubber padding on the base of the uh, glide guide. Let's see if you can see it. That'll help a little bit, but at the end of the day, it is still just a rubber patch. Now, when we're actually running the seam phantom, you'll see these little wheels. We need those wheels to be moving regardless of what step we're on. If that's not moving, that means that our, our depth um, is too far in and we need to release it a little. I'm going to have Joe hold the camera while I show you the holding thing. Do you mind real quick? Yeah, that's fine. Awesome. Um, actually, I've just got to face that, so however that works. Wait, no, I don't. I oh, gotta what? go in the other way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, cool. So.
So, where were we at? All right, so we're gonna start out with the cup wheel. We're gonna be up here. Now, how I hold it with the cup wheel is I've got my hand right on the horn. This is keeping this down to make it enable so that our wheels are rotating. I'm keeping my fingers right here on the lip, the lip of your glide guide, and that just ensures that I'm fully put towards it. I can feel it, and I can put a little bit of counter pressure in there, but I'm keeping this down. If I, with my other hand, I'm holding it here, and I'm kind of close into my body. That just enables me to have more force in. I'm pushing in, I'm not pushing up, and I'm not pushing down. Some people will get the habit or want to start holding it down here. You hold it down here, instantly, that's just, that's physics. That's just going to start bringing that up. As soon as that happens, that cup wheel is going to smash up to our top shelf, and now we're effed. So we're, that's not going to work. So while I'm doing, and this is just for the cup wheel, I'm holding it like this, going through, we're passing through, passing through, and like I said before, the second this pad hits to the edge of that profile, I'm stopping. This is only for the cup wheel. So I'd start here, running, making sure my wheels are moving, 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 moving good. Stop, pull it out. I'm gonna reset, come back through, do about a quarter turn or a one eighth turn, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing until I have enough to where I feel like I can hit it with the 60 grit, removing some of the stone, and then still be able to move forward and not be removing my entire shelf that I have up there. So that's the cup wheel. Now we're gonna, a lot of guys will go straight to the 150 from this. If they have a decent, um, a decent saw cut, they'll go 150 to 300. I don't think there's anything wrong with hitting it with a 60 a couple times. Um, but a lot of guys will, I've, I've actually started going to the 150 and it, it, it works out pretty well, but it just, it makes the 150 wear a little bit quicker, that's all. So when we do switch over to these resin bits, we're gonna hold it completely different because we don't wanna push in pressure. We push in pressure and we're gonna be pushing too much of this material, cutting too much. The 60 grit and 130 or 150 is still aggressive enough where you can really mess this up and mess up everything that you just did. So what I'm doing is I'm still using the same tactic. We're making sure my fingers are touching the back of this, but I'm gonna hold it more like this. So I've got complete down pressure and it's completely moving. Again, we still wanna make sure that our, our wheels are moving each time we do it. But this is the finesse game right here. And we're just going across and here we can go all the way through. We don't need that to be closed off anymore because we're not hitting inside. We still got that, our cup wheel enabled us to get that channel. But what we need to do is we need to hit that a few extra times because it's gonna be protruding out a little bit more because of all the other work that we've done. You're gonna to wanna to do it with the same side. If we don't hit this, you're basically gonna to have too much stock here and too much stock on the other end over here. It's not gonna match up and you're gonna have headaches. So each turn, if you're hearing anything, and the 60 grit's more loud than the 150, the 150 is a little less and the 300, you're almost not even gonna hear it, but you'll still be able to hear it just enough to determine if you're making progress on making that cut or not. But what I do is I'm coming through, coming through, coming through, coming through, stop, and I'm just gonna hit this a few times so I maybe don't hear it as much, come back through, and then I'm just gonna, just a little bit, maybe a 16th, an eighth, no more than a quarter, even a quarter would be a lot. I'm gonna turn it in, push it in a little bit more, and each time we're, we're pushing that depth in, we're removing that much, little bit more of these. Now once I can barely, I can feel just enough of this, I can just enough of this uh, shelf here, I'm gonna then switch over to the 150, but I still wanna make sure that I can almost pinch that little bridge there, or the little uh, shelf that I've created. If it's too far in, all of a sudden, before you know it, you'll finish the 150, and now you just have a complete 90 degree angle. So, again, don't hold it here, because you're gonna pop it. Um, your water shutoffs right here, power's on the other side. And gosh, that's about it. 